feather. In this video we're going to be building this neck here, which is to go with this pine body which you might have already seen be building in a different video. So this is part two and we're focusing on the neck. This is a one-piece cube mahogany with blackwood tech fingerboard. It's going to have hip shot ultra light tuners and it's got a dual action truss rod. Uh, so we're going to start right from the beginning where it's just a square piece of wood with the truss rod rounded for and then end up at this stage here which is left sanders all carved out. So we're going to go through all of those stages in between as well. So hope you enjoy. So we've gone back onto the neck now and just off camera I've slotted for the truss rod here. It's just really simple, just use a simple jig to cut a slot and then I allowed a little bit extra because I put a filler strip in here. I like to use a filler strip, not everybody does, but this just gives it, uh, it cuts down any vibrations going through the neck which you don't want, any sympathetic vibrations. And also make sure you don't get as many dead, any dead spots which can be a problem with fender style headstocks. So next I'm going to attach the templates to this just like I did the body and cut this out. That's the neck cut out now, and you can see I've also marked for the tuners up here. So next up we're going to go onto the fretboard. I've already slotted this. Uh, you can see one of my other videos for how I do that. I uh, use a mitre saw rather than the table saw. And this wood is actually Blackwood Tech, which is an artificial or man-made ebony. And it's I really like it, it works well. It doesn't have any shrinkage problems like you get with ebony. Uh, it's super hard and it's also eco-friendly because no ebony's getting cut down for it. And it, you can tell, look, look at it, it looks as the exact very similar grain to ebony. And as everything else on this base is quite eco-friendly, being recycled, I thought that would be a good choice. And it all goes with the colour scheme of the base too, because I think we're going to end up having a dark pit guard, which will go nicely with that. So next up I'm going to radius that, then I'll glue it to the neck, and then we'll be on to shaping and threading. So this is my radius jig. I haven't clamped it down or anything yet, it's just sitting here, but it will be. I've got my fretboard here, a double-sided tape attached to this. And these end pieces are my chosen radius, so this is 10 inch. And then these wheels sit on the, on that. And then I make the passes by, the rattle will sit in this sled here, and it'll go forward like that. And then I'll move the rails over, and make another pass, about five or six passes not be done. Uh, much quicker than doing it by hand. I'll probably do a more detailed video on this jig at some point, but just, just give you a quick look at it. So that's the board done in probably 10 minutes. Uh, so it's much quicker than hand sand again. Um, you can see I've left extra here. This is all gonna be cut off. And extra width, of course. It's only gonna be a narrow neck. And extra up here. Um, that's because you can sometimes get bits of blow off the side and it tears out. Uh, so if you leave a bit extra, you don't have to deal with that. And I leave it extra up there, these two ends, just so I can set the depth. See here, I went a bit deep, I didn't really want to go that deep, which is fine because it's going to be cut off, so I just use that to set the depth, and then carry on. We've got it by here. So it's only just touching the top of the radius really, so you're not losing too much thickness of it. So this just needs some sanding now, and then I'll be ready. So there's just one more step before I glue on the fretboard, and that's cutting the thickness taper of the neck. So the neck is taped down, double-sided tape, to this, the base of the jig. 
and we've got tapered sides on this for the wet to sit on. So this, this will slide along there, cutting the taper. and I'm getting ready to glue up the fretboard. Uh, you can see I've got a couple of nails through the fret slots here. So these will be completely hidden when the frets go in, but these help align the neck, the corresponding hole in the neck there. So I'll keep everything in place as it gets glued up so you don't have to worry about anything slipping. Also got obviously one down here too. This is in the dead center, so it keeps it in the center. This is off to the side, just to, so it doesn't end up going in the truss rod. And then I'm going to be using Type 1 glue. Uh, I use a lot of epoxy nowadays on joints, but for fretboards, they may need to come off at some point if something bad goes happens in the future, like the truss rod goes or something like that. So I always like to use one that can be reversed where epoxy is quite difficult to undo. Um, and I'm going to use these, these uh, planed on the planer to make sure they're 100% flat. And I've also got some tape on here to stop them sticking. And these will be used along the fretboard to distribute the clamping pressure one on either side of the neck. And these are important if you're gluing with a weediest fretboard like this already is, um, because otherwise you do not get the uh, pressure going across the neck at all, and uh, you kind of end up badly with gaps. So these are important. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. There we go. That's the glue up done. There's a neck in there somewhere under all those clamps. But it's important to use a lot of clamps because it keeps everything even and makes sure everywhere's covered. So I'm going to give that 24 hours to dry now and then I can take the clamps off and then it'll be time to cut the fretboard down to the neck. So here it is out with the clamps and I've cut the excess off on the bandsaw. I'm next going to follow up with the router and a flush trim bit to get it the fretboard level with the side of the neck and then we can move on with then sanding the fretboard, getting it nice and shiny, and then inserting the frets. I like to insert the frets when the neck's still square, so it makes it a bit easier to insert them. Got a flat back to rest against rather than a curved carved neck. So here's the finished glue up, and now it's nice and flush with the edge of the neck. Uh, I've also rolled the edges, and you can see the glue up. There's no glue line or anything, so it's tight all the way along, which is what you want. And I've also sanded the board up to about 500 and then I followed up with quadruple steel wool to polish it up. And I've also chiseled out the nut slot here using this nice old vintage chisel. So next we can go on to shaping the headstock and shaping the back of the neck. But before we do that, we're going to insert the frets. So this is how I buy my wire, fret wire. This is a, uh, I've got a radius into it already. It comes on a coil. Whereas if I had started with straight, I would need bending into the into a radius. But as you can see, this radius is quite similar to our 10 inch on this. It's okay to overbend a bit. Um, that usually helps. So we don't need to bend this at all. So all I've got to do now is cut 20 of these and then I can start inserting them. I'm going to use a bit of uh, wood glue on each one uh, just to seal the slot. This doesn't actually stick to metal, as you know, wood glue doesn't stick to metal well at all, but it'll fill the slot underneath, stick to the wood in the slot, and make sure everything's seated right. So I'm just using the neck to hold on to the wire at the moment. I'm not actually inserting it, just just place to store it to make sure we've got them all long enough. Uh, don't be too mean when you're cutting them. 
Yeah, because if you cut them too close, you end up bending over the tang or damaging the tang. Um, so it's easier just to leave a bit, bit of extra until they're actually inserted, then you can cut them after. That's what works best for me anyway. So next I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna bevel the slot slightly with a file, just to make them easier if they ever need to come out at some point in the future. It makes it a bit, makes less chance of them tearing out any of the wood surrounding it. And then we're gonna put the glue in, and then we're gonna press them in. So as you can see, it's quite minor. You can only just tell that I've done it. The slot's just a little bit wider at the top. And that, as I said, just if they ever need to be pulled, it stops them chipping out from the sides. And it also allows the fret to actually seat, seat even better uh, than it would if you didn't do that. Uh, some people do it a bit more than that. Um, I like it fairly minor like this, because if you're not careful, you can actually make the fret seat worse by doing that if you, if you end up creating different flat spots on the top. Painting the glue in the slot. I'm only doing about four or five at a time. I've got six to do on this one, but normally I only do four or five so the glue doesn't set in the meantime. And then I'll tap it in, just hold it in place with the the other hammer, and then I'll go to the press. Now I've pressed them all in, and it's gone well, there's no, no gaps in any of them at all, nice and well seated all the way along. And so now I can give it a little while for the glue to set, and then I'll clip the edges off, all these sharp edges here, and get them flush with the flush, then file them, and then we can put the bevel on the corners. And then I'll, I'll leave it there for as far as fret work's gone, and we can go on to shaping the neck, and then I'll come back to level them uh, towards the end of the build. It's better to do the leveling of the frets after you've fully shaped the neck, because the wood can store internal tension, and then when you carve it out, it can actually change the level of the frets to a very small degree, but enough to make cause buzz and make it not play as good as it could. So it's best to leave leveling them to white to as late as you can. So now we're going to cut the uh, headstock thickness using the router and this jig here. This is actually my scarf joint jig, you can see this end's angled. So normally you'd have an angled headstock in there and this would cut the angle for you. But we're not using this section today, we're just going to use this bit up here where it's just nice and flat and parallel with each other. Uh, so we're going to use the router on top of this, then this is a stop here to stop me going too far that way. I'm going to gradually increase the depth of cut until we get to what we want. I've got it marked on the side down there, you might not be able to see it there. Um, I'd like about 16 millimeter, 15 and a half, something like that for the headstock thickness. Uh, standard these days is about 14. I like a little extra thickness because it helps with the uh, dead spots. You get fewer dead spots with the thicker, more mass on the headstock. Uh, so that's what I like to do when I can. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do now. And you can see that's the thickness gone now, and I've got this step left here. So this has to be now smoothed out with the spindle sander and a few hand tools just to get a nice head start scoop going there, transition between this and this. And obviously the fretboard's going to be included in that as well. That'll start about there and slope down. And we can drill the tuners now as well. So I've now got that shape in there, the transition between the where that step was before. And I've also sanded the headstock to 120 grit, uh, just because it's 
better to do the rough sanding before you drill the tuna holes because it can catch the sandpaper as you sand it. And then you end up with some scratches, deeper scratches than there should be. I've also sanded the back. Uh, so now we're going to drill the tuna holes and then we can go on to neck carving. Okay, that's those drilled, and you can see the all in a nice dead straight line, all wet, sitting on the top bottom of the straight edge. And you'll see there's no chip out on the front or the back. Um, you'll notice I drilled from the top most of the way through. I set the depth stop on the drill, so I didn't come out the back. That's because if you come out the back, you'll typically get a big uh, splinters coming out the back of here. So it's always best to drill from one side most of the way through until you get to the bad point, pops through the back, and then you can drill from the other side. That way you won't have those annoying splinters which can happen if you just go straight through. Now we're going to move on to carving. Uh, I use the facet method of carving uh, where you first draw up your neck and your chosen neck profile which I've done here and then you will draw it into a square box and you'll draw lines of where you want to remove the waste. And then these lines here, so the edge of the facets, this one here and this one here, are then marked onto the neck so you can see that you might be able to see them there one there, one on the side. So we have to connect these two lines, carve these flat, and then you'll end up with uh, more of like a, like a this shaped neck, almost like a V, but then a little flat on the top. And then you carve the secondary facets on the top here, just on the corner, which will be here, and on the edge of the fretboard. That's normally enough. You can do another facet if you want, uh, another couple of facets, but that's normally enough then to be smoothed out, and then you end up, end up with the profile. Uh, I like to use a whole different load, loads of tools, just. Um, I like to use the draw knife and various different files and rasps. Uh, but I'm probably going to do a time lapse now, and you can see me doing some of that.
So that's the first pass that's carved into the net now. Uh, and you can see the shape of it now. As I was talking about, it's just a flat on the back and like a B on the sides. So now we can carve in our secondary facets, which will be somewhere like this. I've got my measurements on the drawing over there. So I'll transfer those measurements onto this and then cut, cut to the lines again. By then we should be pretty close. And then we'll just have these, the two, two ends to sort out. And then we're gonna be approaching the final shape then. Uh, you can see these are the tools I was using. It was uh, this here, my favorite tool of all, the draw knife. You can take out a lot on that or just a little. You can, you can do everything with it. And then we followed up with the Shinto Wasp, uh, which is again, got a coarse side and a fine side. And then for the little bits up here, we're using the, this chisel here. Well, you use a few different chisels, but that one's a good size for this. And I was using the round file as well, just to smooth out a few bits. So you can see I've cut those secondary facets now, just in the same way as I did the other ones. I also used this tool here, which is called Spoke Shave, which is just takes very fine shavings and it's good for creating flat surfaces like this. So if this is the primary facet here, which we started off curving, then you can see the secondary one in here and there. And we need to do one still down here, that'll be the last one. And then we can just smooth these out and then we'll end up with our finished neck profile. So there we go, here's the carved neck now, and this is sanded up to about 120. So it's still a fair bit more sanding to go. Um, but this is the, basically there now. You see the transition in the headstock there. That's how I like them, a bit sharper than Fenders type ones, where they look a bit like they've kind of smoothed over a bit more on a Fender, whereas I like them a bit sharper lines, same as same on this end. And I also like prefer it to do the heels like this, because this goes right up into the uh, neck pocket up here, so you don't get any flat section here, like we're on a Fender style neck, you'll have a B going down here, and then flat section in there, so but there's no real good reason to have that. Uh, so this makes it a bit more comfy for high fret access. Not so important on a bass, but on guitar it is. It looks nicer too. I'll just show you how, what I'm talking about. Putting it in the body. There we go, you can see it goes right up to it there. There's no extra flat in front of it. And I'll probably actually smooth this off even more to make it just completely seamless. So other than some fine sanding and drilling the small little tuner holes on the back, just the mounting holes, and making a nut and the side dots. They're the only remaining jobs for this neck now. Um, I'm gonna use this, this is a lumen lay. It's small, the small size, two millimeters, so I'm gonna mount this in the fretboard in the center, I think. Uh, if it was bigger, I would mount it on the seam and drill it into that. Uh, but this one's small enough to just be in the fretboard. So that's what I'm gonna do with that. And that's a fairly simple job. You need to draw a line down the centre of the fretboard and then measure the centre of each position. Uh, 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, 15, etc. So I've now drilled the holes for the inlay, the lumen lay, and then this is how I put them in. I, just, I use a cocktail stick with some super glue on it. Drop that in the hole. Make sure there's enough in there. And push this in and then because that will I don't want to try and cut that until the glue set I spoke with a bit of activator super glue activator and let that evaporate a second and then I can trim it off you can use clippers and most people do but my favorite thing for doing it is a jeweler's saw because I can get right close down and it doesn't destroy the top of it that you get a fairly clean cut off it whereas if you use clippers you can mushroom the top and it gets all messy so I'll just use this and keep making sure I'm keeping it away from the neck and cutting it upward angle, so I'm away from the, from the neck. There we go. And that'll obviously but look a lot neater when it's sanded flush. But it's much, again, much cleaner than you would be if you just clipped it. Okay, so I'm going to do that on the rest now. So that's them in now. I've um, sanded them flush as well. I've started off with a fine file just to take the last bit, the, the beginning off, and then finished off with 120, the same as the rest of the neck. And then I'll obviously send the, these along with the rest of the neck up to five, 600, something like that. So I've just got to drill the little holes on the tuners and the nut, and that's this neck done. So all we've got to do now is make sure these are straight. But they are and evenly spaced, which they should be from the holes which are drilled through the headstock already. And then we've just got to mark each little hole here and then drill these out 
to 1.5 millimeter and I'll use the drill press for that and then that's that done so I like to uh, mark these by using a drill the exact same size as the mounting hole there so there's no no slop in that at all it fits perfectly and just give it a little tap with the hammer and that should have marked that And then I can remove the tuners, uh, stack them with that, and then drill them out. And for the nut, I've got this bone one here, which is actually one I made for another base years ago. And then it, I, I think I cut one of the slots too deep or something like that. But it's not going to matter for this one because these have got lower flex than that one obviously had. So I can use this nut. Uh, the only thing is it's a little bit high this way, so I can file that down. And then that saves me having to make one from scratch, which I normally do. So that's basically all the jobs for now done on this neck. It's going to need fine sanding later on, and it's going to need a string tree, and obviously finishing oil and the flex leveling. But for now, we're going to leave this neck and go back to the body. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. And um, please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And the next video will be going back over to the body, and we'll be doing putting it together and the finishing, all that good stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for that one and I'll see you soon.